Hello there. So in this video, I'm going to show you what's exactly happening when you upload a file using an HTML or in another word, when you use multi-part form data. What data is actually getting transferred over the wire uh, is what uh, I'm trying to uh, understand, uh, you know, or explain it to you uh, in this video. To test that very quickly, I'm going to use a very popular uh, command line tool that you can find in Linux and Mac OS type of operating systems called Netcat, which stands uh, the command line uh, tool is uh, named as NC. So basically what this command that you see uh, right now uh, does is it's going to open up the port 8002 uh, in the local host and going to listen in and then uh, do the printing as and when a request comes. So I'll keep this thing running and uh, next I'm going to go to the next tab over here. I have a bunch of files here. So I have a binary file, I have a uh, a zip file, a couple of zip files actually, and an HTML file, a text file, and also another HTML file. So I'm going to demonstrate how to pass data uh, to that server that I just ran using multi-part form data using two ways. So one is by running the curl command, which is quite easy. Another one is uh, by showing you uh, a an HTML, uh, which is this HTML, in fact, uh, I believe so, uh, which I'm going to open uh, in a while in a browser, and that will have the details. So let's first run the curl command and show you how, what exactly uh, I mean uh, out of this. So basically, the curl command is, curl is a very popular uh, client tool uh, that's available in most uh, operating systems, or else you can download and install as well. Uh, now, this particular command, what it says is basically use uh, uh, curl to pass in form data, which is uh, what actually stands for the hyphen F uh, argument. And it says person anonymous. And then I also use this word secret. And this particular sample zip file uh, is... Uh, referred to using this ampersand sign and then I'm using this uh, command. So let's just run it and of course you're not going to get a response because my server is not responding but of course you see some data has come here. So this is a very good tool for debugging uh, purposes if you have a client application if you want to just see what's actually getting passed along the wire all that uh, might be really useful uh, to see for debugging purposes and this NC or the Netcat tool is ideal for that purpose as well. So this basically says uh, the curl passed, uh, you can see the user agent is curl and it sent a post request over HTTP 1.1 uh, protocol and the host is this and uh, the the content length is this. The interesting part is how these two data got transferred to our server. That's what I'm trying to understand here. So when such a form data is passed, you will see the content type header coming in. These sections up to here uh, is, is a set of headers uh, that come in uh, on uh, HTTP. So content type will be uh, multi-part slash form data, and then it will be uh, separated using a semicolon. And then you also find something called boundary equal a certain value. And you see a set of, uh, you know, dashes and, and a random set of numbers here. And these will usually be unique between two different, uh, uh, you know, HTTP calls. So it will be unique. So what does this boundary say is different form data will be separated using this uh, boundary, this set of characters, which is exactly what you see here. But if you really count uh, these dashes down here, it will be two dashes more than what you find here. So you will, uh, let's say, uh, I'm not going to count these dashes. Let's say if you have 16 dashes here, you will find 18 dashes here. 
right? And that's because uh, the, the specification says uh, these things should be started using two dashes. But of course, the boundary doesn't have to start with a dash here, but it apparently starts with a dash in this particular scenario. And in that uh, scenario, you will see two more additional dashes here. And when you are writing a server and if you are intending to pass uh, this particular data, make sure that you, uh, you know, counter for that those additional two dashes as well. And you see uh, another, uh, now this part is actually data, comes as part of a data and not as the header. So this will be in the message body. And in the message body, you will see these uh, boundaries and you see it also ends with two different dashes over here. And in addition to this, and uh, yeah, so then uh, within each boundary, you see a section called content dip disposition, and you also see a content disposition here. And this is basically a text data, and you see form data, uh, name is person, which is this particular thing that is indicated as the name. So in this case, the name will be secret, which you will find here. Um, name is secret in this case name is person the data for that will be uh, you know always presented uh, after a new line here it, there will always be an empty line here form feed and new line character will be there so that needs to be accounted for when you're passing as well so an anonymous is the data uh, for this particular simple text field so this is a file Right, so that file, uh, the name will be indicated using the file name uh, parameter, and that you will have it there. And its content type will also be uh, indicated. In this case, it's application slash octet stream. But in case of certain uh, zip files and certain clients, this will also be indicated as application slash zip instead. And these values are basically the binary, uh, you know, uh, byte by byte value for your data that you are passing. So it is simple as that. So let's leave some uh, uh, space here to see how the same thing will be uh, shown when you upload these files and text using an HTML form instead of curl. So let's try to do that. Okay, so the HTML uh, file for this is pretty straightforward. It's a very simple form. And you see under the body section, I have a form field. Uh, so let me have it like this uh, to make sure that it's more clear. Uh, and you see, I'm I'm in my action field. I'm giving the 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 URL for my service, and the method is post. And the encryption type ink type is uh, mentioned as multi-part form. And I have two text fields. So one is having a very simple default text, and uh, the second text field is having a, a Unicode character, basically. Uh, um, uh, character A and this particular Unicode uh, code point is for the, the letter pi, uh, rather phi I believe, uh, So and, and then letter Z. And then I have a file uh, in which case I want to just upload a text file and an HTML file and a zip file and a submit button. And uh, I have opened this thing in my uh, Firefox browser and this default text you can change it if you want to. Let's say my name and this value, I'll just leave it as that. And let's browse and I'm going to give this uh, particular text file uh, for that. And then I'm going to give this simple HTML file for this. And then I'm going to give this uh, sample zip file. And then uh, do the submit. And of course, uh, you're not getting any responses back. But if you, if you just go back here, you will see a bunch of data has come here. Same thing. And you see uh, now the user agent is uh, Mozilla Firefox. And you see this content type header, just like the previous thing, multi-part form data, and you see a boundary. And this is the, the unique value that was generated using uh, Firefox. And it has the content length and usually other types of headers. But interesting part is our data. And uh, data is all separated between the boundaries here, right? Uh, and now you see the my name section that came in because it's just a name text one name text two is uh, our special character here a uh, uh, five and z and then uh, the file name simple text will display the text file and the content type is text 
plain and when you upload the HTML file, uh, look closely how the content type is text HTML here and the HTML will be uh, printed uh, using its raw form and, uh, and in the zip file case it will be just as the previous one. And uh, I believe now you have a better understanding of how things work here. Uh, I'll just wrap up this particular video using uh, how you do the same. Uh, but in this case, let's say if you want to just pass data using this form uh, with the hyphen D, you can also do this in other clients like uh, Postman as well. So when you do this thing, you see the data or the content type is application uh, form X hyphen www. Uh, hyphen form hyphen URL encoded and the value will be just sent here and if you send multiple uh, such data let's see minus D uh, name uh, my name and you will see how things are separated using an ampersand and uh, yeah so this is basically a very a uh, short video to explain you what exactly is happening when you send uh, form URL encoded data and the multi-part uh, form data to a server and how uh, data is transferred there and this is especially useful for debugging purposes and also especially when you are implementing a server uh, to pass these data uh, correctly you need to have a better understanding of what's happening uh, underneath. I hope you found uh, this uh, video useful. Uh, stay tuned for a vid another video like this and uh, please subscribe to my channel uh, for more videos like this for you to get notifications. Have a great day. Bye.